Greetings everyone and welcome back to another random mini review of a product you've probably heard before. Most of you probably own one of these things in your house and that is Funko Pops. Funko Pops have been around for years now and I remember first seeing them here in Australia in eBay games I think and there was just a whole wall of them. And it was like, wow, look, there's stuff from Evil Dead. Oh, wow, look, there's stuff from Friday the 13th. Oh, look, there's stuff from Resident Evil. Oh, look, there's stuff from Pokemon. Oh, look, there's all these sorts of things. And over the years, there's just been more and more and more that have rolled out that it is literally ridiculous. I don't know much about them, to be fairly honest. From what I do know is that any character that's ever been in a movie or show basically has a Funko Pop version of them. At first, I did like Funko Pops. I really did. I bought a whole heap of them, but over the years, it's just kind of like, oh, it's just another big-headed, googly, black-eyed figure in a box with the name of what it comes from on it. I'll admit, some look really cool, like the Exorcist Funko Pop that I have that's just sitting up on my desk. I think I got this from Cashies for like three bucks. And while it has the whole googly-eyed thing and the whole big head, it's still pretty cool. If I do come across one that's really cheap on my travels out and about, I will pick it up. But for the most part, I'll just leave them because they do take up a lot of room and I'd honestly prefer other merchandise rather than Funko stuff. But in today's one, I wanted to show you all a bootleg Funko Pop that I found while I was traveling through a lot of country towns during my break I took a couple of months ago and I stopped off at one town and went into a $2 store that had a whole bunch of low quality knockoff Funko Pops. And honestly, I should have bought all of them, but instead I only just bought one from there. And that's what we're gonna be taking a look at today. But I know there's knockoffs of Funkos on AliExpress and all that sort of stuff that are almost identical to the real deal. But the ones that I found are extremely low quality knockoffs, like they're not even close. You've seen in the thumbnail already just how bad it looks. Before I show you the two things I wanna take a look at today, I just wanna show you some honorable mentions that were at this $2 store. Even though these knockoffs were $10 each, let me show you all number 57, Hello Tie Kit. It's not Hello Kitty, it's, it's Hello Tie Kit. It's a very small figure that's in there, but the box looks good. It's only slightly crushed. Then we have another one called Hello Nitty and Freenos, and this one's a Hello Tykit, and looks a little something like that. It's close enough, I guess. And you can also see the Lilo and Stitch, the Flareon and the Mewtwo just kind of uh, chilling up there, which uh, they look as good as you'd expect them to look. But hands down, my favorite one that I found on my travels, get ready for it, the Super Mario Donkey Kong. That thing is pure nightmare fuel. It will eat your soul and it will devour any great thoughts that you had in your head in an instant. That thing is absolutely cursed and I should have got it because it's cursed. Yeah, feel free to take that in if you want. Enough introduction, let me show you the real Charizard Funko Pop, number 843. I don't even know what number it goes up to now. It probably goes up to 6,654. But this is one that I picked up from a local collector shop. And I only bought this for the purpose of having it next to the bootleg Charizard, just for the fun of it. I paid $29 for this figure, and I haven't really taken a good look at it, to be fairly honest. It's just sat in its box like most Funko Pops do. But let me show you bootleg Charizard. Yeah, you know, um... I guess it's it's close. Well, I guess if you're nagging your parents for a Funko Pop and you're in that $2 store and they see these, they can be like, here, kid, shut up now. Um, it's close enough. It's not close enough. The weight difference between the two is night and day. Let me show you. A normal Funko Pop in box weighs about 240 grams. An extremely low quality bootleg one weighs an incredible 92 grams. <laughs> the box weighs more than the figure. That should give you an indication right there of just how cheap this thing is. But at first glance, if you've seen the bootleg on a shelf, you might be like, hey, that's not too bad at all. But if there's a real one sitting right next to it, you're obviously gonna tell the difference. So the pop logo at the top is slightly different on the knockoff one. The Pokemon logo is actually more vibrant on the fake one than it is on the real deal. The 843 is more vibrant on the fake than on the real deal, which is odd. And Charizard himself on the real deal is like a cartoon render of it, whereas the fake is more like a 3D render of it sort of thing, which I would say is a 3D rendering of the real deal, perhaps? Looking at the bottoms of them as well, the Charizard to me looks better on the fake because it's more like pronounced sort of thing, like the wording just sticks out a lot more, whereas the real deal is kind of just smooshed in together. Swapping to the sides though, there's some noticeable differences. Once again, the whole 3D rendering on the fake one, whereas it's the cartoony sort of sketched version on the real deal there. Backgrounds are definitely different, and on the real deal as well, these little details 
uh, there on that one. On the other side, you can also see a slight profile on what the figures are looking like, but we'll get to the figures soon. Then we have Angry Charizard there and Angry Charizard there. The Charizards on the side pretty much look exactly the same. So from a side profile, let's looking pretty much the same. Now the bottoms look extremely different. So this is the real deal, which pretty much has all the instructions on it. You've got the Funko branding, all that sort of stuff there. You've got warning, choking hazard, small parts, not children under three years. That's good to know. And it's item number 30 out of 17. But on the back, looks a little something like this. I actually really like all the ones shown on the back of the fake one. Even though they're probably not part of the series or set or whatever, I still like having them all on the back. Whereas the real just has Pikachu, Horsey and Charizard just there. Obviously this box is a lot more high quality than this one, but there's still some details that they've put on the fake one that are reasonable for what they are. Now it's time to properly look at both figures up close to see how good they really are. Poor fake Charizard here has just been sitting in the box all this time and now we need to finally see the magic. Also this box just has the dimensions on there but okay. I should put the fake Charizard in the real box and the real Charizard in the fake box just to throw things up a little bit. But the packaging is different with this little sort of plastic capsule packaging, but the figure itself looks a little something like that. And can you move his arms? Oh, you can move its head, that's right. This figure itself looks okay, but I can see sort of the paint job isn't the best on this one, even though this one's real. It's just not exactly the cleanest figure, I suppose. I mean, even like the joint between the tail as well is not really the best. That's why these things stay in the box. Because when you pull them out of the box like this, you start to see the inconsistencies. You do have 2021 Pokemon and Funko 2021 down the bottom there. So then what's the difference between this one and the fake one? <laughs> the fake one's a little baby. It's adorable. This weighs a whole lot of nothing, even the plastic. <laughs> You can just squish the plastic in. There's no branding on it. There's no break on the tail either. It's all just part of one mold there. Kind of looks like he's taking a massive shit that's curling around his back. The wings are little <laughs> baby wings. <laughs> they're, they're, they're cute. You can make him go exorcist if you want to. Okay, the head shape is there. The facial details are there. The body, yeah, okay, you've lost it there. If Funko released baby Charizard, this is what it would look like, but it'd be slightly better quality. The orange is not as vibrant on the fake one. It is very, very pale orange compared to the very bright orange on this one. The shape's there. It's just the detail isn't quite what you'd expect, of course. Now, taking the boxes out of the equation, how much does each of these weigh? So, a real Funko Charizard is 158 grams. Our fake one doesn't even stand up, is 46 grams. Also, it stinks really badly of cheap plastic. Like, ah, why did I do that? The belly and the claws and stuff aren't really painted the best, but for a figure that only costs 10 bucks in its box, at the end of the day, if you were a very casual collector and you seen one of these for 10 bucks, whatever sort of thing, but obviously if you're one of those hardcore Funko collectors, you're gonna see this and immediately wanna set it on fire, which is understandable. Honestly though, I kind of feel more joy with the bootlegs than I do the real deal because the real deal I've seen over and over again. You've seen so many of these before of everything in pop culture. Everything has been made into a Funko Pop. We're seeing the bootlegs is just funny. It's just, I don't know, something about it that just gives it charm. I mean, me personally, I love bootleg stuff. That's what my whole channel's built upon is looking at bootlegs and knockoffs and all that sort of stuff. So seeing this was like, oh, that's really cool. And, you know, having a look at this in person, it is really cool. And seeing the other fake ones out there is really hilarious. Obviously, I don't condone the sales of bootleg Funko Pops and stuff. Not that this has Funko written anywhere on it, though, but I still wouldn't really endorse the sales of these knockoff products. It's just more of a fun little thing if you did come across them. If you had other Funko Pops, you could just have them side by side as a bit of a laugh. These have been sitting out on my shelf with the other Funko Pops that I have, and I just thought that I'd take a little bit of a better look at them because I was intrigued to see the actual difference between the two. And while you can see the difference between the two in the boxes, it's uh, more pronounced out of the boxes. I wish I had more to show you, but I honestly don't think anyone's even going to watch this, to be fairly honest. I know LGL is not a big fan of these, which is completely understandable. And as I said earlier, I'm not a huge fan of them, but like if I see one cheap, I'll grab it. But just like when you go into a collectible shop and you just see like an entire wall of these things, it's just, where do you even start? And if you want to get into Funko collecting. You've got the Holy Grails, ones that were made in limited runs, special editions, variations, just way too many. Let me know what your thought is on these below. And 
if you do want me to get more bootleg Funko Pops, then I can. Or I might just look out for them and maybe take some photos and post them on Instagram or something. Because I know places that have a whole bunch of them. It might be fun to just do like a big sort of compilation of all the bootleg Funkos I come across. But I don't know if that's going to be anything interesting or not. As I said, this was more for my curiosity sort of thing, just to see the difference between the two. I guess that's it for today. That's having a look at an extremely low quality bootleg Funko Pop that I found in a country town for 10 bucks in a $2 shop. Let me know what you thought of this one down below, if you even watched the video, because I don't know if anyone will even watch this or not. It's just a 31-year-old sitting at his desk going, oh, look, look at this Funko, look at this Funko. I don't know, it's not for everyone, but hey, I enjoyed making it at the end of the day. And because I've rambled quite a lot through this review, it'll probably be over 10 minutes now, so if you've made it to the end, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, but if you use the timestamps to skip along, that's completely fine. It's definitely went a lot longer than 10 minutes, that's for sure. That'll do it for this quick one, folks. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And as always, please take care, stay safe, be good people, and I'll see you all in the next one, which will be something. I don't know what it'll be at this point in time, but um, we'll work it out. If I even decide to publish this, uh, this was a really bad review. I'm sorry. Let me know what you thought of it down below. Keep being awesome, everyone, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.